Greetings, my name is Chris and welcome back to Random Tronic. Yesterday I was messing around with some old junk and with the high voltage generator that I've built in one of the previous episodes and I wanted to revisit this. So this um, whole contraption here used to be, well it is still um, a self oscillating generator with a feedback winding on the transformer. Now I have one more of those transformers and I thought what if I drove the transformer directly i.e. not uh, by self oscillating circuit but by an external oscillator maybe something like a triple five timer driving a MOSFET and driving the transformer so I did a little test setup here and I've got a generator um, over here hooked up through a big mess of wires to a MOSFET on the breadboard. Now ignore everything else on the breadboard is some other project which I can't remember what it is but I don't want to unplug it in case I remember. I've disconnected the transformer, just the primary winding and connected it to the... here is the effect. We are getting really nice Jacob's Ladder out of this. As I change the frequency on the generator when I go to about 120 kilohertz this is what I'm getting so let me zoom in. That's better. So you can see on the DSO 068, uh, I'm just using it as a frequency counter. And yeah, this is at 123 kilohertz, and you can see it's very sparky. And the further I go, it just makes a lot of noise. The current draw drops and it loses. So now I'm decreasing the frequency. Uh, the DSO 068 is a little bit slow in changing but here is 119 kilohertz and as I go down this is 114 kilohertz and it's got a nice really nice stable arc that go travels up the ladder but as I go even further down so this is 110 I guess that's about as stable as it gets but if I go less 103 there you go the arc tends to, tends to stay a lot longer at the bottom and sometimes it takes a moment for it to reignite like like now so when it goes out it yeah it's not as effective so I think the optimal frequency for this transformer is about 110, 112 kilohertz. Seems to be the most visually pleasing. While running, the circuit draws roughly between 600 to 700 milliamps at 5 volts. That means that I could easily have this USB powered. That immediately reminded me of something like a lava lamp or that sort of device. So I thought, oh, let me make something that it's USB powered, convenient under an amp so most of the phone chargers should be capable of delivering that much energy and yeah make it contained and somewhat safe but that also gives me an excuse to make another PCB with the pantograph so I will quickly design just a simple PCB with triple five timer that uh, will accept hold the MOSFET triple five timer and uh, a couple of other passive components then we'll work out the values for it to oscillate at about 110 112 kilohertz and put it together and here is the PCB um, I engraved it out on the pantograph and I used this time a brand new bit that came in engraving bit uh, 10 degrees 0.1 millimeter and it worked out quite well. I did engrave far too deep. I was rushing and yeah, it's gone far too deep. It goes almost all the way through the PCB, but it's okay still. I just need to be more careful next time. It works out much better when I'm doing those connecting planes rather than engraving each individual track. It's far quicker and easier that way. And here is the schematic that I will be making and it's really simple basic stuff so this is the 555 timer and what I've um, added on here is a micro USB connector that um, I will be using to get the power into it this is just a secondary uh, pin header connector just in case I need to power it with something different than micro USB 
a big capacitor across the rail the, across the power and um, in my case I've actually as an afterthought I had to modify the PCB because that's just what I found I've added another one like this and they're both the same it's two times uh, 1000 microfarad in the oscillator circuit um, I've got two capacitors two resistors and a pot and those are 750 picofarad 750 picofarad both resistors are 2k and the pot over here is 10k the MOSFET transistor this one here is and this is a logic level N channel MOSFET and here is a connector where I will be connecting the uh, primary of the transformer one thing it's that it's not included in the schematic I simply forgot about it until I built the board is a small cap over here in my case that's 68 nanofarads without this capacitor the primary coil draws quite a lot of current it will go in the excess of one and a half amps but when with this capacitor added the primary winding and the cap oscillates uh, between each other making a much nicer output on the high voltage side and also reduces the current draw to half an amp 600 milliamps or so at 5 volts we'll be able to run this off of a micro USB and here is the board all soldered up and I've done this, uh, I did this off camera so we've got the 555 timer to the coupling caps um, that's it's all scrap parts that I've basically desoldered out of other junk old school trimmer pot, uh, here's the old school 68 nanofarad disk capacitor they don't make them like this anymore back of the board I filled the gaps after the routing um, I filled them this time with nail polish and that worked quite well I've made a few mistakes on the board like over here I went uh, far too close so I've added a resistor wire just to thicken up the track that's the positive so there will be some current going through here so I just want made the track a little bit beefier and same here it was um, a little bit a little bit narrow one more thing I goofed up was the footprint for the trimmer pot and I had to re-drill a couple of holes but other than that it turned out okay the USB connector I've pulled out again out of some uh, old equipment and I've hacked it in it's a yeah unusual one because it's encapsulated in plastic USB in and we've got a little arc can you yeah you can see that on the camera but once it gets going it produces quite a quite a distance uh, I'm not sure how much is that about eight millimeters to ten millimeters or so gap uh, there we go a hundred and twelve hundred fourteen kilohertz hundred thirteen that's where we wanted I added the pot because otherwise it would be very difficult to fine-tune the frequency if I take it a few kilohertz out it basically stops producing the nice arc so it needs to be finely adjusted to a specific frequency here is the transformer that I will be using is the same one as in this thing it's I've had two of those um, on the board and here is the board it came out of it's the driver board for the uh, LCD TV and yeah there is a few more interesting components worth salvaging um, on this so I'll keep the board there's some nice MOSFETs over here uh, an opto isolator if I needed one and what else an interesting looking fuse tiny one I wonder how that will do with gross overload so I've got my driver board I've got the transformer I've got a piece of glass and this is a section that I've cut out of a old fluorescent tube I've got a small piece of wood like this that's going to hold the tube like so I've got a couple of more pieces of wood this is just a big block that's going to be base just to give it some stability when it stands upright like this the electrodes for the Jacobs ladder and what this is is just a two long sections of wire really straight and this will be under tension to keep it uh, to keep it straight all the time and I've made this it's just a piece of sheet plastic that I've cut out a circle then cut off a little 
edge uh, all the way around it so it fits inside inside the tube the wires at the end um, i just simply put a blob of solder yeah and that's how they anchor in the top so they're not electrically connected to anything over here that shouldn't be an issue um, i think because the spark gap will get progressively thinner as we go down so that should allow the jacobs ladder for to initiate the arc at the bottom and then travel all the way up uh, hopefully this this gap over here will be too wide for it to sustain plasma arc and it will go back down and start again all of this will be happening inside the tube and i wanted to do it in a tube because a it's going to be safe to handle it can be just standing on the desk but it also makes a really cool sound when you've got the plasma arc inside of a glass tube so let's put it together Now I have to figure out a way to make it consistently start the spark on a, in a certain place where I want. So the wires have to be held at the closest point um, at that point, but they can't be electrically connected and there can't be anything that's flammable next to it because that, um, yeah, if it will char, it will become conductive and it will short out. So what I've come up with is two tiny little brackets made out of coffee steering sticks through those across i'll push in uh, two pins like this and of course they won't be electrically connected but then those wires that run through the tube they will go in the middle in between the pins and then they will fan out so technically that should be the closest point where they where they're passing between the pins and that should give me a easy way to start the gap start the spark at this gap and then it will travel upwards like this and now i have to just place it underneath right in the middle of the tube i have to connect two secondary windings of the transformer in series so i'm just going to use a small piece of wire thin the ends just put a jumper link across those over here and now the fun part is to thread those wires oh dear this is not going to be straightforward so what i have to do is push a pin through but before I do, I need to cut off the head of the pin because if I didn't, that would mean that between those heads, it would be the closest point and that's where the spark would start. Okay, I think this should work now. The wire is going very closely in there. So the question is, will it work? And it's not working. Okay, let's try again. Uh, this piece of plastic I'm thinking might be conductive because it's causing me it's burning on the top and a bit sometime later and a little bit more troubleshooting I got it to work now I've had a few issues uh, I couldn't get the other transformer to work and when I touched it on the edge it uh, yeah it gave me a little tingle so I think the transformer uh, the other one is shot it's got arcing over somewhere so that didn't work so I had to take the original transformer I had in the previous uh, toy that I made and move it to this one and I've added uh, 100 nano cap instead of uh, 68 nano cap that I had on the previous one and this seems to be working a little bit better in this application USB powered Jacob's ladder there we go that's the end of this video so it uh, yeah it works a Jacob's ladder it's uh, interesting to note how I'm not sure if you will pick up on the camera but the plasma arc changes right before it goes all the way up and just disappears so first it's a solid bar and then like here it changes to two sharp points that fade away fade away towards the middle that's interesting but uh, for this video that's it i hope you enjoyed it everyone likes high voltage so thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this build of a USB powered Jacob's ladder that's beautifully playing the tune inside the tube, it sounds actually quite nice. Please do subscribe for some more random electronics related stuff, please do give me a like under this video if you enjoyed it and for the time being take care.